It's the Corrado Lark, Corrado Lark, Corrado Lark, Nickcast Podcast Channel. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> hey, y'all, and welcome back to the Corrado Lark Nickcast Podcast Channel. What am I playing an accordion? I don't know. Hi, y'all. It's Corrado Lark, the host of the Corrado Lark Nickcast podcast channel. You can find me as Corrado Lark on Instagram and Ravelry. And you can even email me at CorradoLark at gmail.com. Don't know what I'm doing. In another odd mood today, which means it's a perfect day to bring back the podcast. I've been away for about three weeks. Um, I kept trying to film the podcast, but things kept getting in the way, so I'm extremely sorry about that, and anyone that I talk to about a podcast coming out, here it is, we made it, and I'm back. I'm back, nitwits! Yeah! And sweaty. It's a sweaty day here in New York City, in Queens, the story of Queens. Um, it's, like, raining on and off not the cutest weather. It's not my kind of rain where it's not humid but rainy. Now it's like sticky wet summer grossness. Sticky wet summer grossness. Like like uh, I was trying to go for um, Lana Del Rey summertime sadness. Failed. Failed again y'all. I don't know where I picked up y'all as like one of my words. I'm not from the south. I'm from Connecticut. Iced coffee and When in doubt, don't hold your pinky out. Fold it in under your hand like this, but not touching the glass. So, if you're new to the channel, there's a gist of who I am. You're welcome. (laughs) So the first thing I'm going to talk about today, I am going to get to some knitting. I am going to get to some of my adventures. I even have some some stash enhancement. I even have some stash. I even have some stash enhancement eyebrows. But first off, I want to talk about the upcoming event this weekend, the Brooklyn Boy Knits Barbecue at PS 145, because I will be singing five songs from a a knitting cabaret that I am putting together called Knitters, Like Me! Exclamation point. When I posted about this on Instagram, I didn't do the comma exclamation point, but I think it's necessary, and I think I'm going to throw that, that in there. For any of my further posts, oh, so tired. I've done so much today. Not really. It's a nice day off. I just knit a little bit. I can't fix my hair right now, and it's driving me nuts. I cannot continue with this podcast until my hair is fixed. Anyway, the barbecue. So, uh... I'm going to be singing some songs at 12.30, so if you're coming to the barbecue, I think it starts at 12. Uh, Come a little bit early, or make sure that you're there for 12.30, because I don't start late. I get in, and I get done. Accents all over the place today. All generally offensive, too. So it's going to be fun. I I know Brooklyn boy, Lewis there, uh, has some other, another performer that'll go on after me, I think. Um, no shade. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, so it'll be fun. Uh, I'd like to see y'all there if you're in the New York City area. Next order of business. Hmm. Ah, oh, we're going to get to my whips. So it's been about three weeks, as I've said, and I have no completed objects. I have been really trying extremely hard to finish, um, the syncopated and lace cowl that I'm about to show you, which is really beautiful, and I really, really love the the product, and I really, I, the pattern's gonna be really fun for people to knit, um, because it's in my, like, general, where I, like, I don't change things for about four to six rows, and every four to six rows you're changing and doing something different, so it keeps you really interested. Um, but, that being said, not that I'm not interested in it, just my knitting lately, I, I just haven't been completing things. I... I'll get a few rows here or there done, and then I'm on to, like, the next thing. You know, especially when I'm writing a, a musical cabaret, which I've done a couple of now in my life. Um, every time I do that, it kind of takes over for a bit, and I really have to focus on it, and I really want to get my um, my parodies down. 
because for the cabaret and what, what makes the cabaret, I guess we'll go into that first. All over the map today. We're gonna go into cabaret life first. Uh, I started doing cabarets when I was in college. Um, I went to Adelphi University in Long Island for acting. And, and Jonathan Larson, who went there as well, who wrote Rent, uh, when he was there, he used to, you know, they would write cabarets every semester, basically. Um, student written, some teachers would, you know, jump in, all sorts of stuff like that. And so I got into parody writing and doing that when I was in college. And since then, I've done, I think, three or four cabarets at this point. Um, so this will be my fourth or fifth uh, that will be out there. And this one is dedicated to my knitting life that has just begun. I've just been birthed a knitter within the past year and a half. So, uh, it's about my journey in discovering knitting through the internet, through YouTube, and then um, about all the amazing people that I've met through knitting and some of the people that I really wish I'll meet. There is one beautiful song dedicated to one beautiful podcaster, which I will not talk about at this point until you see the video, which I will be recording it and posting it on my channel next week. So. You're probably not going to get another traditional podcast next week. You're going to get that and listen to me saying about knitting. It'll be great. Back to the knitting. Uh, so this, at this point, I am calling the syncopate and lace cowl. I've changed the name of this plenty of times at this point. Just can't decide on a name. But I can decide that it is pretty stunningly beautiful. To remind you, I am using some art fill. Um, the singles fingering and then undercover otter singles finger fingering. Uh, I don't think this is devil dog. I don't. I think this just has a number. I could be wrong. Maybe I'll look into that. Maybe I'll post about it. Maybe not. Sorry about it. It's a. Uh, <laughs> it's a beautiful like teal and blue in uh, blue, and this is teal and pink and white. Hence it blows out. So put them together. Brioche lace. Here we are. This is where I'm at with the syncopate and lace cowl. I'm almost done. Um, I'm at my last section of lace before I bind off. And this is actually the reverse side, so um, there we are. So what do you think? It's, it's fun that it almost has that like watercolory effect. If you see in there, there is one lace section, there's another lace section, and then it will end in lace. Uh, this is the uh, teal and pink was bought at Vogue uh, by my second mother, essentially, who's like my mom's best friend, who's grown up with me, blah, 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 blah. Uh, <laughs> it was picked out by her at Vogue Knitting. Um, she also picked out another undercover otter, which is one of my favorite skeins of all time, so I like refuse to use it. It just sits on my shelf and I look at it. Sometimes I bring it to bed with me and take a little nap with my yarn. True story. <laughs> so this is when I'm actually knitting it. Um, this is what it looks like the, the reverse way. It's interesting, right? How much it changes. It, it's pretty fascinating. Um, the lace sections are all the same lace, but uh, in reverse stockinette and regular stockinette, I guess. Uh, you know, it's reversible lace, but they look different on each side. Um, and they balance out and they get really cool and pretty. Um, Fingering white projects are really great in the summer. Uh, actually, it's been interesting. This is my first summer that I'm actually really knitting through it. And I I haven't changed too much of what I normally knit. I, you know, I'm still going with the cowl. Like, it's still perfectly fine. Even though it's a sweaty room right now, I'll just sit in my AC and knit my cowl. You know, it's fine. But I do have some projects that are really great for summer. And I uh, I'm really excited about some of them. We'll get there. Okay, so there's the syncopate and lace cowl. It's really beautiful. It's super squishy. I can't say enough good things about the yarn. Good things? Grammar? Forget grammar. Who cares? Sorry, sockmetician. Do I say that every time I talk about grammar? I think I do. I mean, Nathan's like a stickler for that, isn't he? I've, I've finally gotten to chatting with him a little bit on Instagram. After much insta stalking, no, I didn't really stalk him, but I just was like, "Hey, look at my projects I've been working on. What do you think?" And he was like, "Good job," and I was like, "Thank you." That's how these Instagram things go, right? And then he makes some more extensive friends, obviously too. But uh, it's really cool, just even the small passings of words that we have for each other in this community. Oh, 
before I even go. Loose ends, y'all, are not loose ends. I have to weave in so many ends for this that I shouldn't have to. Um, you know, you really only change colors like a couple of times. But like, for some reason, I've been using my higher, higher sharps, which are very sharp. And every once in a while, it's like catching. Like, look at that. Like, what am I gonna do? I think some of it's gonna block out, but I'm not 100% positive. This one, look how long that is. That came out of my knitting. <laughs> And I can't see where it came from on either inverted or regular. Like, it's just the magic eight inches of string. Anyway, so there's a lot of ends on my projects right now where they really don't need to be. But this project is nowhere near ending. <laughs> I love it. This yarn is beautiful. It is uh, Leading Men Fiber Arts. Um, their Merino Yak Silk Base. It's so stunning. It's... Uh, a single ply but really sturdy and this project you know I started I basically it looks like I'm in the exact same place that I was you know here I am at the lace section if you haven't seen this before this is the Bobby Infinity scarf um, with intarsia to hold the two sides together and then on the edges I um, I'm either gonna do an eye cord uh, an applied eye cord or I'm thinking about braiding more on that later Thinking about braiding something to figure that out. Something's in my throat. I'm a really experienced, talented podcaster. So, uh, here's where I am with the lace. I'm gonna have to rip this back again. <clears throat> <clears throat> Something's like right in there. Anyway, um, I'm gonna have to rip this back again. I've already ripped this back now three or four times since we last met on the tubes. Um, but I really want it to be perfect and what I'm going for here is I want the lace on both sides to angle out so I want them both to come out but the tricky part that I'm having is this marled section because of where it is and how it connects I'm, I get sometimes these bigger holes you see that big hole maybe you can see it better there See how there's a big hole there on the inside? It's only on that one. And it's doing the exact same thing, mimicking, you know, the rest of it lines up perfectly. But for some reason, I'm getting that in the center. Now, so basically where I'm at at this point is I just keep trying different lace ideas um, because I didn't swatch for this in the beginning. I didn't think this is what I was going to go into. Typical my life. Um, I swatched for this stuff. And I just didn't want to do that the entire pattern, as beautiful as it would be. So, um, I'm at the point where I'm just experimenting still with this section. I'll probably go another two, two repeats and then I'm just going to rip back um, so I don't get too far ahead of myself. And hopefully by that point I'll have figured out what I'm looking for. <sighs> I know what I'm looking for, I just, it's, um, it's so disappointing, it's so frustrating, like this is... This project is taking me way longer than I intended for it to, and it's really taken me the longest any project that I've ever worked on. Um, you know, I hear about designers, and I know designers that will work, you know, years on some projects to get them right, and this is that project for me, no doubt. Um, so I do just want to put out an apology to Steve of Leading Men Fiber Arts when I initially said that it would be, you know, I would have this out quick to him it's not gonna be so quick I am aiming for the fall I am hoping for like September I'm hoping to get this done by September which means I have a lot of work to do which I know and I'm working on it so really beautiful the yarn I can't say enough good things about it um, it's just the beautiful contrast the green and then the like silvery with the green super fun it's gonna be really beautiful in the end when I get there. When I get there. Because, so, <laughs> I can't even. A few weeks, what was it, last weekend was a Worldwide Knit in the Park Day, or wait, Knit in Public Day. I keep doing that too. I keep saying Knit in the Park Day because that's like what I associate with knitting in public. It's like, like the subway's like average. Like, oh yeah, I'm just knitting on the subway. But if I'm gonna go knit in public, where am I gonna go? gonna go to the park so anyway I keep screwing that up but worldwide knit in public day was this past Saturday 
And leading up to it, I was looking at my two projects. I was like, neither of these can I knit and talk to anyone with. Like, they are, you know, they take a little bit more focus, a little bit more of my attention. Otherwise, I'd have to rip back. And, you know, you don't want to deal with that when you're, you know, knitting in public. You want to, you want something simple. So, I went to my stash, or what stash I have, and I, uh, I picked up a skein of fiber seed. If you haven't seen Fiber Seed, they were at, you know, there there were some at Vogue, and Threads and You has been carrying it, and they go to, like, Stitches. She goes to Stitches and, and Vogue and stuff. Um, and I picked some up at Stitches, and the Partly Cloudy, um, the Sprout DK, um, this is how much I have left, meaning I need a whole lot, because this isn't very much. I think it's about 30 grams that I have left, and this is where I'm at with the hat, because I decided, let's cast out another hat. Why not, right? So, this yarn is insanely cool. Uh, it, it's, it pools on itself. It's like a self-pooling yarn, I guess you would call it. Um, if you look up most of the patterns that are out there for this, they're gonna focus on pooling like this section right here. You see how it's like, it's one solid like blue and white and then the solid dark gray. Now, I am planning on just finishing this off with where I'm at. I'm very close to the end of the decreases. Uh, I do plan on finishing it off, but I also will probably rip this back to about this point. Because if you notice, like, I used a twisted rib here that breaks up all the, the intended speckling, to, or intended pooling to make it speckled. And then I it starts to do this, like, swirl around. Um, and then I got to this section, and I think because by this point in the hat, your gauge tends to be a little looser when you're just knitting around like I was, um, it started to do this big pooling, which, as fun and cool as it is, is not what I was looking for in this pattern. Um, so I'm going to figure out a way to um, continue the spiral. I think I know how I can do it, too. Anyway, um, so this hat's going to be awesome. Let's try it on. I'm excited for this one. I'm very excited. I, I thought I would have it done by tomorrow, and I probably won't, but look how fun and slouchy that is. Um, it was a 100 gram skein. I thought it was only 50 grams, but it was 100, which was really surprising. And then I think 250 yards. So it's a lighter DK, but it, the yarn itself is really cool. I w I've been looking into the company. Um, they're... Uh, they use the wool supplier that, the, that I think it's the Navy uses. Um, and so they have a really, you know, it's American wool. Um, and I, I mean, this hat's going to be really freaking cool. So I, I'm going to call this the piece of sky hat. Oh, God. Did you see that hair? Dang. I'm a mess. Uh, I'm going to call this the piece of sky hat. Uh, because, well, Peace of Sky is a song from Yentl. And, and it looks like you're getting like, just little, through the clouds you're seeing the sky. Um, and then there's like rain down here, get it? Wow, concept. Um, so this hat's really cool. I posted on my Instagram asking about pooling. I did a little poll and it was I think 80, somewhere around 80% of people were into pooling about 20% weren't into pooling. I think it's fascinating that, you know, just by where dye is on a skein of yarn, you're gonna get a different, like you can actually tell where, you know, the dye is gonna land. So I'm really into emphasizing that. Uh, I've debated leaving it with this big section. I'm not sure, that's why I'm gonna still continue and see where it closes off to. It might end up being cool. Um, and it would actually make things very simple. For the pattern um but if not you know it won't be too much harder to make the spiral happen i'm pretty sure so there are my three whips um i really uh i normally have maybe a little bit more going on i normally have things done already uh but life has been it's been a lot lately a lot um i'm gonna pause right here I tried, okay, I tried filming this podcast earlier today, and I was failing. Just failing, just wasn't good. So, I decided to restart it now, and like, I'm, I'm like 20 minutes in, so I think we're doing pretty good. 
But earlier today, I was like, oh, I forgot to bring that over. And I forgot to bring it over again when I went to film it again. So, pause. I'll be right back. And we're back. Uh, I went and grabbed what I was looking for, which was the Omni 7 cowl. You've seen this for a bit, but guess what? I'm finally going to be releasing this pattern. Um, I'm either going to release it this weekend or early next week. And here's the sample that I have. Um, again, it is in 7th um, Floor Yarns in their Train Congestion colorway, which is blue and yellow and green and like this mucky color in there too, which I love. Um, it reminded me of a train. Um, so... Uh, this, that Worldwide Knit in the Park, Worldwide Knit in Public Day, <laughs> keep doing that. Uh, I, the Seven Floor Yarn girls came over and we actually went and filmed, or did some photography with the sample that they knit up, which is in their lemonade colorway, and it's just yellow. It is, she, you know, Amanda and Judy are incredible. They did a really great job. So, um, I am probably going to use that as, like, the main, um, photo because you can see the details in the pattern much easier um, than in this one but this one is so big and grandiose and like it, it's I mean super warm and it's already super hot and here I am wearing a cowl but it is really um, squishy the yarn is you know it's an Aran MCN super nice and you can almost see what's going on but not really in person you can definitely see what's happening um, when you're looking into it but that's how it goes. And I am still really happy with this one. It's uh, something very different that I don't have anything else of that I can throw around my neck and go around New York in. So uh, this pattern will be out um, in the very near future, probably before I podcast again. Um, so go grab a copy. It's gonna be great. Let's do a coffee break again. Okay. Now, what do I have next? Oh, I have some adventures that I went on. Karate luck, adventure time. Not a song. Those weren't notes. I don't know who I think I am. Moving on. <laughs> Seriously, this hair thing is a problem. Like, I, I recently got a haircut. It's not even that, like, grown out or a mess, but I'm a mess, so there's that. Adventures, last Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Last Friday, I uh, I participated once again in Yarnamentary. Uh, it was the se it was the second or third, I think it was actually the third day if we include the day before, which I wasn't there for, where they taught the teachers to knit. Um, I was there on Friday, and you know I've been working with Lewis for a bit now, uh, and you know I thought I knew everything going in, but I did not know what was happening in that morning. So I show up like. Hmm, I think it was like 8.30, I was at, I, I showed up at 8.30, and then uh, around 8.45, we had to like start heading out. And when I showed up, Lewis goes, okay, we have two classes for like kindergarten to second grade, I think it was, you know, much younger kids, and then we go to the older kids and we do the regular, like we're teaching them to knit stuff. But for those younger kids, we're going to do friendship bracelets. Braiding. I hadn't braided in maybe ever. Not since I was much younger, that's for sure, at least. So uh, I quickly was like, Louis, you have to show me how to braid. He quickly threw it together. Um, and then on our way up to the classroom, I was just like, I grabbed three colors at random and just, you know, braided something, threw a bead on it just to know what was going on. Um, I chose these three colors because they really spoke to me and I've been thinking about like a darker color with a yellow and a teal for a while. So this is my, f maybe my first friendship bracelet? Probably not. I've probably done them before but forgot. I knew I, I know I used to do hemp bracelets. I was really into hemp bracelets when I went to uh, summer camp. But friendship bracelets I'm not quite sure. Um, so I picked these three colors and guess what colors they are? The Yarnamentary colors did not realize, but I matched my shirt that day. So, um, I was able to learn how to do it at first. I, I'm still kind of struggling with how to connect the two ends, like, and make it not, I don't want all these frillies. These frillies, I called them. I don't want any of these loose, these ends here. Um, I've been looking into different ways to, to secure them. 
nothing's really worked so far. But I started off with this one and then, you know, I was able to help the, the young kids learn to do that, which was really fun. They were really cute. Um, and then we went and I knit, you know, I had a group of only, it was four people, uh, four kids this time uh, to actually teach to knit. It ended up being three because one was really obsessed with Kai who was there, you know, Kai, Kai Port um, on Instagram. He's, uh, so he, he really wanted to go knit with Kai, so I let him go knit with Kai. So it was me and like these three girls, and they were pretty funny. They were cracking me up. We were having a good time, you know. If anything, you know, they got to take the yarn and the needles home that day, which was cool. And if anything, they got that, you know, there's something they can do, they could look into if they're, you know, interested further. Um, so it's been a really cool adventure with that project. Um, I'm excited to see what happens with it in the future, and I definitely really want to be a part of it. Um, so I think it'll come back in the fall. I know the whole, um, the Brooklyn Boy barbecue this weekend is kind of like the kickoff to summer. And then we have this big break from all the classes and stuff. So we'll come back with that in the fall, which will be fun. Um, anyway, I learned to braid that day, right? So, uh, I think it was, it must've been yesterday. Yeah, yesterday, uh, where I just was like, you know what, let me see what I can do with braiding. I can figure it out. Like maybe have some fun with it or something. And I just went to like what I had in my stash and I picked out these two. So this is the Azucar face uh, from Alex Creates, the rock candy colorway, um, which is a glitter. Uh, it has Lurex in it. And then I, this is one of my favorite Madeline Tosh's that I've ever bought. Um, it's, a, it's a cream base and then it has like just speckles of every color. And they're all bright, really bright pink and blue and, and green, and then just little spots of black. Look at that. Let me see. There you go. You got to see it a little better. Yeah. So I use this in the um, girl from the grocery. Oh, God. Messing with the camera again. The girl from the grocery store uh, shawl that I made in the fall. I use this. And then this I've been saving for uh, another uh, infinity scarf that I want to work on. But I decided, you know what, let's put them together and we'll make a bracelet. Which is what I've been wearing this whole episode. So this is the bracelet I made. Um, I, I started off by braiding, you know, two separate braids that were connected by the loop. And then I went into one thicker braid with all of the, the yarns that I was using. I used one, two, three, four, I used nine strands of yarn to do this. Yeah, nine strands. Um, and it, you know, it makes a perfect like wrap like this. I've washed it now. Um, they are super washes, so you're, you know, it's perfectly fine too. So, but it did stretch out a little bit, but I really don't mind. I think it has a really fun look. Um, and I've been really loving having this on my wrist. Like it's been really kind of fun. So knitted jewelry, I guess, is the next, one of my next ventures, I guess. I mean, really, I'm just braiding at this point, but I do have some plans to use some eye cord and some other fun techniques to do some other stuff like this. Um, I really like it for summer because it's super quick. Anyway, that was my little like, y'all, it's summer, you should be braiding with me. Shouldn't we all be making friendship bracelets? How fun would that be? I'm gonna be making more. Case in point, I made one earlier today, but I wanna talk about this one a little bit because I'm not the most happy with it. So for this one, I ended up going with some of my leftover Blind Butt Farms, the Cooked Maine Lobster colorway. And then this is actually from my On the Seven cowl. This is the Seven Floor Yarns Train Congestion. So I put them two together, I put them two together, and you know, you get the look blue, the green, you know, the brown, they, they, they tend to work together. But I think because one was Aaron MCN and one was like a local wool, it's not, um, they didn't blend together as nicely. Um, I haven't, you know, I still left all my tails on because I have to figure out how to connect it. And I was thinking about giving this to my coworker, Alfonso. Uh, he's cracking me up these days. I work with him two days a week um, at the coffee shop. And he's, he's from Italy, but he's lived in Sydney, Australia. He's lived all over the world. He just likes to have a fun time. And he's so easy to talk like this. And you know, the whole thing, that was a horrible Italian accent. And I'm Italian, that's a problem. 
Anyway, uh, <laughs> he's always cracking me up at like, you know, 5.30 in the morning, which is hard to get me to crack up at 5.30 in the morning. I'm not gonna lie. But he gets there. So I, I was gonna figure I'd make him one. And you know, it doesn't look too bad, but it ain't this. I mean, this is much nicer. So I'm gonna just keep playing with different um, weights of yarn, different, you know, yarns that I have in my stash um, and make quick little friendship bracelets for people that I like. I think that's gonna be my summer my summer side project instead of like casting on all these hats um, which do take a lot of time away from my actual knitting this if I you know want to do that I can make this in maybe five ten minutes and be done and you know have a really cool gift for someone that you know at 29 at, you know in our age we're not often getting friendship bracelets but we should be so let's do it we'll do a friendship bracelet along what do you think instead of like a knit along a bracelet along comment below I really want to know actually because that'd be kind of fun maybe I'll do a prize or something if we if we're into it let me know maybe I'll announce that on Instagram too and we'll do it all all across friendship bracelet along what else can we call it I'll I'll think of a better name anyway so that's what I've been doing with some of my side work and thank you Lewis of Brooklyn Boy Knits for showing me how to make a French the bracelet again if I had it if I actually learned at some point I'm not sure and speaking of friends, the next thing on the list is to actually talk a little bit more about Worldwide Knit in the Park. Every time. <laughs> Worldwide Knit in Public Day. So it was earlier last week that I, been, I was talking to Stephanie of Asylum Fibers. She was like, oh, you're coming Saturday to Bridal Park? You know, we'll knit together. I didn't realize that it was like the big event for Worldwide Knit in the Park. Worldwide Knit in Public Day. Uh, so I was like, sure. And then, you know, I had heard before that Nitty City does an event there um, that I was, you know, I was actually in talks with, with helping out with maybe doing some sort of bigger event with them for that event, for that day. But that didn't end up, end up happening. It was perfectly fine that it didn't happen. Um, but, you know, I, I ended up going there. I showed up at around 1.30. Uh, the actual event started at 2.30 where all the knitters gathered. Um, so I just ended up finding a seat over by the carousel um, with a lot of loud children. Uh, but, you know, I had a table, I had a seat, I was able to knit, you know, kill some time. Of course, Stephanie or Eddie, one that I knew would be there. Not that I knew, I didn't know that everyone would be there and their mother, but anyway. So who do I meet walking up to my table, passing the carousel? The Gemma Darling, Danny Danielle. Uh, so I hadn't met Danny before the event and immediately we connected and, um, and she sat down, she was like, oh, can I sit here? I was like, yeah, you, I know who you are. You're sitting down with me. Okay, great. Um, and you know, she sat down, she like podcast a little bit with me there and then we talked a bit, you know, she's also Sicilian, um, and she lives out in Jersey. She's a really cute baby. Um, and she was really fun Th throughout the entire day. I spent most of the day sitting next to her. Um, and so yeah, we started off there. Uh, I went to grab a coffee when they went to find, to go find Christy Glass. And so I eventually found them. So there was like Christy and Cece and Gigi and, and Danny and, and Judy and any other E's? Lisa. No, it's not any <laughs> Lisa and Andy Untangled. Um, and I'm Pearl from Nitty City, who I can't thank enough for putting on such a cool event. You know, I, I love Nitty City. It's one of my favorite yarn stores in the city. Um, so I had a lot of fun that day. We were live for a bit. I know uh, if you go to Gemma Darling's podcast, she podcast about the day already and put that out there. Um, there's a lot of me running around like a lunatic because I felt a little bit like a lunatic because there was so much going on. I mean, Alex Creates was there and I had seen Alex in a bit. Also, I met all of Jose on Inst from Instagram Jose. Uh, he's a really cool like fiber artist, I would say, because he's, you know, he crochets with like, you know, garbage bags and all sorts of, he does some really, in really cool art. Um, but, you know, there was a lot of people there. I think there was over 200 knitters at the park, uh, which was really fun to see. It was a really, really fun day. It was a beautiful day for the event. Um, I had a great time and I can't wait to do that again next year. <laughs> It'll be really fun. Um, 
I also think Nitty City helps teach people at Bryant Park on Tuesdays. Uh, I was going to reach out about that because I think Alice, who's a friend of mine who works at Nitty City as well, um, I think she uh, hosts that. But I'll let you know if I end up going to do that with them. I would like to. Uh, now, backing up another week, I, uh, I attended the uh, Brooklyn General 16th anniversary birthday party, which was super fun as well. There's been so many fun knitting events in the city this summer. Um, you know, being new to it all, being I'm like a newly outed knitter, knitter uh, it's been really fun to go out to all these events and just meet so many new people um, and go see, especially, especially some of these yarn stores, which are just beautiful. Um, and Brooklyn General is by far one of the most beautiful in the city. Um, it's just the aesthetic is really like, um, I would almost call it like the uh, old country, uh, oh gosh, not the old country buffet, um, Cracker Barrel. It's like the Cracker Barrel of yarn stores. Because <laughs> it's, it's like earthy, crunchy, but like beautiful hand dyed yarn everywhere. Um, and some standards as well, which is good. You know, you know, I, I like having a mix of both in my yarn stores. Um, I think it makes the most sense. But some of the stars that are all AD hand dyed, I'm not gonna complain, like, I love that too. You just have to have some for me. Anyway, so we went to the event, and by we, I mean me and Lowey, uh, who's a friend of mine as well from the knitting world on Instagram. Um, I went with her, it was after we actually taught at Brooklyn Boy Knits, the knitting session that day. Uh, we went, I went over and I was supposed to meet Alex of Alex Creates there, but, uh, he ended up not making it, which was fine. Like I just ended up hanging out with Loie there and then, you know, browsing and talking to Heather of Hello Mellow Handspun, Hello Mellow Handspun, which was really cool. I love seeing Heather as well. Um, if you haven't seen her yarn, uh, check her out on, on Instagram. Um, you're about to see some right here. Uh, and, and then, um kind of just celebrate their birthday with them and really get to see the store. I will say, I keep running into Kristen of Oldenvine and the Yarngasm podcast, but not saying hello yet. Like, we like clearly see, I like see her, I'm like, mm -hmm. and I just like never get the opportunity. Like, she's always surrounded by people and I haven't been able to say hello, but I do want to, because she's one of my favorites. Um, and her yarn's also really cool too. Um, but I had fun at the party, had a little bit of wine, got to shopping a bit, and as I said, I got some Hello Mellow hand spun. So here we are at Stash Enhancement. Neither of these are going into my stash. They're both going to be knit up as soon as all of my needles are cleared. Uh, but, you know, Heather and I have been talking for a while. I've met her a couple times now, and I went to her first when I found this skein. I was like, oh, I'm obsessed with this one. This is a beautiful, beautiful color. Um, so this is, as I said, Hello Mella Handspun. Uh, she has an Etsy store. It's limited edition, hand dyed in Brooklyn, 75% Corydale wool and 25% baby alpaca. 100 grams, about 400 yards. She says it's a lace weight, but I was talking to her about it, and it's um. It's somewhere in between a lace and a fingering. So I'm not sure how it's gonna show up here, but this is brown with like some deep purples in it. Maroony, purpley goodness. You know I love these kinds of colors. Like I'm a sucker for this one. So basically I showed her this. I was like, I love this skein. It's incredible. She's like, it's yours. I was like, thank you. I love you, you're great. So uh, she's like, find something to match with it. So, you know, I went looking around and um, and I, I couldn't find something that was perfect for it, but I did find this that I think is really cool, or like perfect for me to wear with it. I found this, which I think is really nice and beautiful as well. I'm not sure if it'll end up being a project for me. It'll probably be for someone that I know, maybe my mom, I don't know. But um, this is her fingering base um, in Northeastern wool, about 400 yards as well. So together I'm gonna to make some sort of cowl. Um, these yarns will probably brioche really well. So typical me, a brioche cowl, it's gonna happen. <laughs> um, but they're really fun, they pair really well together. I feel really bad because this past Sunday, um, she had a, uh, Heather had an open house 
uh, an open studio and I intended to go but I, I I just forgot that day and I was running around like a madman so again I'm so sorry for not going Heather but thank you so much for the yarn it is really beautiful um, and I'll have a project done with this hopefully by the end of the summer as well um, these are both definitely on the slightly rustic side but not no more than I would say like a blue sky fibers like their natural wool it's really um, it's gonna be really nice um, to wear I think for sure but it's pretty good it's beautiful stuff and then now I've been dreaming just like most people in the knitting world right now of that yellowy coppery goldy color that is just everywhere um, you can find it you know pretty much every dyer right now has a version of it going out um, in, in anticipation, I think, for fall. I think this fall it's going to be a huge color for people to wear, um, huge color for people to knit. Um, I'm really into the yellow right now. Um, so, and that might be one of my problems with all my projects is they're all in the blue-green field. You know, I'm just like dying for yellow. So, Brooklyn General has a lot of that yellowy gold color. I mean a lot of it. And I obviously picked my favorite of them all and went, oh, I love this one. I need to find something. And, I'm, and I've been planning on making some more shawls this fall. Um, so uh, this will probably be my Rhinebeck shawl because I, I still don't do sweaters yet. So I'm going to do a Rhinebeck shawl this year. And uh, this will be one of the colors in it. Um. This is the Masala colorway from the Walk collection. The Cozy Merino, 100% superwash. Um, it's the sock weight, so look at the fingering. 366 meters, 100 grams, um, single. And I mean, it is by far one of the most beautiful I've seen of that type of color, of the yellow gold realm. So I found this. And then the next one I found, um, you know, I, I stayed in the Watt collection um, for this shawl, and I found the Jade colorway. And I was like, oh, this is a really, because I wanted something unexpected with the gold. Like, I didn't want to stay in the gold family, and I didn't, I didn't want to go brown, because, you know, I have another brown, a lot of brown going on. So I found this, like, Jade color. I was like, oh, this is really cool, perfect for a Tuscan shawl. But wait, there's more. You know, I was walking around with the two and everyone's like, oh, what's the third one you're gonna go with? Cause you know, there are so many like three skein shawl projects and that's pretty common out there. So I went, you know what, let's bite the bullet. I'm gonna go with a third colorway. Went back to the little walk collection section, which they really, they must have sold out of a lot of it cause it's, it's really beautiful. And I think this color is Claret, Claret, Cl I don't really know what the name of this colorway is, but I threw this like maroony purple in and there's the three colors for the shawl um i i have an idea for this i already know what's gonna happen what my plan is um for the design because i will be designing a nice shawl with this and i'll be nice and it'll be a larger shawl i'm gonna go into the larger shawl for this one um i think triangle as well uh, and I'll probably work again with my freeform lace concept, uh, but in a different shape, basically. So, oh god, these are, everyone's talk. you hear everyone talking about these too, right? If you're, if you're following other knitting podcasters or other knitting people, people love this collection. And now I am included in that because it is, I, you notice these tags are like half coming off, that's because the first like three nights that I had these, I was definitely like sleeping right next to them. <laughs> Cause uh, this is one of my most exciting projects I've, I think I've ever put together. I'm really loving the color combination. I think it's just different and, and still masculine. Um, and I am super excited to work with this. <sighs> Whew. I got some knitting to do, don't I? I really should get to it. Um, and I think this podcast is a nice distant, nice, uh, a long, longer podcast for you. It's about 45 minutes. I think that's a good amount to catch you up on my life. Um, so with that, thanks for joining in again. I've had a great time talking to you about my knitting. 
Um, uh, reach out, comment below if you're into friendship bracelets like I am this summer. If you haven't done one, go look it up, go, go try it out with some of your leftover yarn, because really, you don't use a lot of yarn with it too, which is really great. You can use pretty much any scrap that you ever have um, to make some more, some bracelets for people. So rock on, nitwits. Uh, my roommate, Graham, uh, he was like, oh, you're doing, he's Irish, you're doing a knitting pod, uh, knitting podcast, let me see, uh, don't talk to the pot, mm, let me do my, my Irish, Irish accent, it's really bad, really bad, anyway, he's, he's talking to me, and he goes, um, what do you talk to all your knitters, you have a, you have a knitting podcast, what do you talk to those knitwits about, and I was like, knitwits, how have I not thought of knitwits, hence, I've been using it the whole episode. It's mine now, stolen Graham. Go back to Ireland where you came from. Not really, he's pretty great. Anyways, thanks for joining in. Hope to see you next time. Bye. Ha.